Good morning and Merry Christmas. It's been a different sort of Christmas Eve, and of course we are celebrating a different sort of Christmas Day, but we are wishing you and your family, your loved ones gathered in your homes and maybe the people you can't meet with this morning, the most Merry Christmas today. May it be a day filled with joy and celebration. Today we are blessed once again to have Contus join us for our Christmas Day service. You'll hear one of the pieces that they are most well known for, Ave Maria. But as a reminder, this special group prepared with a strict quarantine before they recorded with us here at St. Andrew. And so you'll see them singing closely together without their masks, and we took every precaution. Only three people in the sanctuary gathered to record them so you can know that they are sharing the Christmas joy and the Christmas spirit with us safely. So Merry Christmas and welcome to worship. We begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you, for the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains. Turns in reply, echoing their joy strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. All powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello. I'm so excited to get to share with our children on this morning uh, this special day where we get to give gifts and receive gifts. And I've got some good news. I've got one more gift to share with you. But first, I want to share with you a story about one of the best gifts I've ever received, which I'm holding in my hand here. When I was in elementary school, I lived in Chicago, and I loved watching the Chicago Bears football team. Uh, mostly because they had my favorite player, uh, Walter Payton, who played for them. Uh, He was a running back for them for 13 years. He won a Super Bowl and was inducted into the Hall of Fame. But even more than that, he was a good person who helped others. Uh, So much so that the NFL has named an award after him that they give to a player every year who helps out their community. So if we skip ahead a few years in my life to middle school, it was my English teacher who gave us an assignment to write to somebody that we looked up to. And I, of course, wrote to Walter Payton. And the assignment was to write to this person and ask them what their favorite book was. So I wrote to Walter Payton, and amazingly, I got a letter back from him. I was so overjoyed. It was such a gift. Uh, But it gets even better because of what he wrote in response to my question, what is your favorite book? And Walter Payton hand wrote on his personal letterhead, the Holy Bible is my favorite book. Receiving this letter was wonderful, but the true gift was pointing me to a book that has guided my life, that shared about how God was at work in the world. And that is the good news I share with you. Uh, There is one more gift for you on this special day. It is the gift of the person of Jesus Christ, whose birth we are celebrating, who shared with all of us about a God who loves each and every one of us. God bless. Merry Christmas. Today's gospel is from the gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. They offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him into his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 
Good morning and Merry Christmas to all of you as you gather at home on this incredible Christmas morning. Oh, the memories and oh, the, the history of what it means to get up on Christmas morning uh, with, with families in our traditions, our food, our expectations. This year, of course, is a little bit different as we gather here. Some things are the same, uh, some things are different. Michelle and I talk about our Christmas decorations that we pull out. Uh, This year, it seemed earlier than ever before. In fact, we even heard from Pastor Matthew that his Christmas tree went up on November 1st this year. We were so in need of the light of Christmas. I think we could pass along a new nickname on Pastor Matthew, like November 1 or Early Bird or whatever uh, would be appropriate. But we just so needed that. One of the things that uh, is different, of course, is that we're perhaps missing a few of the people that we normally celebrate Christmas with. We'll be connecting with them in other ways that we've been growing more accustomed to uh, these days um, of isolation um, and distancing. And so we hope that as we come to you and to your living rooms that we uh, can enjoy the Christmas spirit here together because Christ is born um, for us today a savior who comes into this incredibly messy world uh, to bring us words of love and hope um, and peace. So one of those decorations that we set up at our home is our manger scene. Perhaps uh, you have many Christian homes have a manger scene and it has all the characters that we read about in Luke 2. You know, it starts with the shepherds who are, who are out in the fields by night keeping a watch over their flock. And so our manger scene, which is a Palestinian olive wood manger scene, has the shepherds there and sheep, of course. Angels appear and those are in, our, in the manger scene as well as in our minds as we read the Luke 2 story. They say, go to Bethlehem and there you will see the child who is born And they go to Bethlehem and our manger scene like yours at home has Mary and Joseph in a little stable type of building. Um, And perhaps there are three wise men carrying things in their hands. These are all the stories um, of Christmas. Um, That was true last year. That's true this year. um, And true for all the Christmases um, to come. Today though, I'm inviting you, we are inviting you uh, to include another person in the Christmas story as we read not from Luke 2 like we did yesterday uh, for Christmas Eve, the traditional birth story, but we read the story of Simeon, the man in the temple, an older man, a faithful man, a wise man, One who knows what's coming, who knows that God is about saving God's people and bringing hope and peace um, and love into the world, that a Messiah is coming, a Savior is coming, and he is portrayed in this part of Luke chapter 2 as one who is waiting in the temple for the appearance of this gift from God. And lo and behold, Mary and Joseph bring the little baby Jesus a few weeks after he is born into the temple. Into the temple to perform this, this, uh, this rite of passage in the Jewish tradition to present the baby Jesus, their son, uh, to God and to perform sacrifices there um, for him and present him. And what does Simeon do here? Simeon rushes over to Mary and Joseph takes the baby Jesus into his hands, raises up, I think of of Simeon raising Jesus up and saying, Master, you are dismissing me, your servant in peace, for my eyes see my salvation. A salvation for all peoples, for the Gentiles, and for the children and people of Israel as well. That great phrase that Pastor Lilliard read for us here this day. Simeon boldly claims this infant Jesus from Mary and Joseph and pronounces this blessing upon him. I'd like to think that as we set up today in our minds and perhaps literally in our manger scenes, um, that we're setting another character here now, setting another character around the manger scene of this man named Simeon, this faithful man who expected all of these great things. And Simeon reminds me a little bit of a New Yorker. 
You know, I spent my first six years as a pastor in New York, and you get used to the brusque directness of New Yorkers in that context. And Simeon, in the same way that he went over to Mary and Joseph and took the baby Jesus out of their arms and pronounced this blessing, I can almost imagine him metaphorically elbowing his way through the shepherds and through the sheep, getting his way into the front of the manger and looking in at Jesus and saying boldly, I need a piece of this as well. Well, I need to see salvation and love because in my long life I need to play a part in this. And as is said and written in Psalm 118, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Simeon boldly claims the coming of the Savior to bring peace. And I think this year among any of the years of the 50 that I have been alive, that this is a particular time of season where we are claiming the gift of a savior, the coming of love and peace in that little baby just like Simeon. I think it is important for us to be bold. When I think about claiming boldly, what hope is uh, in our world, born in the manger. Um, I wander around me and I see around me people, examples and stories where, where hope is being claimed boldly, even in the face of all that we are experiencing these days. One example recently uh, was a trip that I had the privilege of doing down to Zion Baptist Church in North Minneapolis, a historic black congregation in downtown Minneapolis that has a bold vision. Rewind a couple of months when the holiday giving steering committee was meeting and we were uh, trying to come up with the five partners uh, that St. Andrew Lutheran Church could, could contribute to, to bring hope and healing in our world through our annual holiday giving campaign. Prop $30 gift cards, Cornerstone, Adopt-A-Family, and others uh, were highlighted, but we left one open because this year you can't make decisions too early. And this one we left open, we hoped would be a ministry in the city. And lo and behold, thanks be to God, information about the Zion Baptist Church Learning Pod came to light and it became our fifth partner. And almost $8,000 was donated from St. Andrew and people like you to the Zion Learning Pod. Think of it this way. These are kids first grade through eighth grade in the neighborhood. It is a pandemic. Moms and dads are working. Maybe kids are from single parent families and are relatively unsupervised during the course of a day. Think of them as not having technology available, Wi-Fi, computers available, um, as in addition to just the supervision that's needed uh, to conduct school these days. We all know the challenge of that, of course. The Zion Learning Pod rather spontaneously and nimbly was created for the neighborhood, not just for the pandemic, but for the future. Because these first through eighth graders need a community center, access to high-speed internet, skilled learning coaches or teachers and tutors as well to make a difference. And Zion Baptist Church and the learning pod became our partner. I have the privilege of serving on a college uh, board of trustees. And we've been doing some talking, obviously, about how the pandemic is affecting students, elementary students, high school students, and beyond. And we use these words in enrollment and admissions um, about how 2020 and 2021 um, are seemingly going to have some asterisks by those years. When it comes to students' academic records, their transcripts, uh, we need to take into account that these are odd educational years. But what I like about Zion Baptist Church um, is that they are not willing to put an asterisk by those years on the children's of their, of their neighborhood. 
that they are going to rise to the occasion and bring hope and bring a ministry to these children and to these families um, that will fall by the wayside if it goes on for very much longer. And so when hope is born, and when hope is born in the manger, um, and when a learning pot exists so the kids can realize their future, I get caught by the spirit of energy, contribution, and of excelling where these children will be able to live into their fullest of potential. That is what it means to boldly step into a pandemic and to say that we will not let the pandemic define us, but we will define the people in our neighborhood during this pandemic. So this will not be an asterisk year for those children um, in that neighborhood. I'm also reminded of all the people who are boldly taking steps these days, boldly taking steps where they know it's a challenging year, but they are doing all that they can to live fully and completely. One in particular, my own mother recovering from knee replacement surgery now these days is taking those bold first steps literally using that knee for the first time. But I think that there are many other people as well that are, that are boldly like Simeon who are taking steps um, in life to do what needs to be done during these se- this season as well. I think about people, parents um, who are caring for their kids and needing to do the things that need to be done uh, so that they can have normalcy in an education uh, these days. I think about healthcare professionals who every morning need to say, I need to go back to the hospital today. And they're boldly saying, I need to bring what I have to bear on the people in the hospital. Here at St. Andrew Lutheran Church, we have a group of Alcoholics Anonymous that meet here in this building. And the man who, who, who shepherds this group uh, called me early in the pandemic and said, Pastor Peter, we still need to meet here uh, because there are so many people that are in danger of falling off the wagon. And we, of course, said, absolutely, let's make that work because we need to boldly say that even though the pandemic is going on, that we will be with people to bring hope and healing into their lives where hope can exist for them even though everything else around them is deteriorating. All the steps that you have taken to make this Christmas day as meaningful as it is uh, for yourself, for your spouse, for your kids, and anybody else who you can connect with either personally or virtually. All of these steps that you are taking, you're courageously stepping into this hope and knowing that the Savior is born and hope is a reality. When we look up, we look up in hope. If we look down at our future, we look down at dismay. But thanks be to God that there are these stories and images that means and says that we are looking up in hope and that Jesus' birth is a day that we can claim here today boldly that this is God's work among us. Hope for our futures. I have been talking with someone from St. Andrew Lutheran Church these days um, about the light at the end of the tunnel list. Do you have one of those lists going, a light at the end of the tunnel list? I do. At least a few weeks ago, when the announcement of all the vaccines uh, uh, that are going to become available gave me a little bit of a spark, I, I kind of let myself go there a little bit for, for a few minutes. I said, oh my, could it be that next summer or could it be that next school year or whatever? Uh, I let myself go there. My light at the end of the tunnel list started going. Maybe it's having a big party uh, for my family and friends because doggone it, I'm going to have a party. Maybe it's taking Michelle out for a a simple dinner and a movie. Ugh, doesn't that sound great? Or maybe it's something a little bit uh, more grand like finally getting a chance to take a trip that we've been waiting to do for so long during these days um, of isolation. But as we gather here and we think about Simeon, seeing the baby 
come into the temple and him boldly going and claiming it. What we have in the example of Simeon here is not someone who is waiting for the light at the end of the tunnel sometime down into the future. But Simeon is seeing that there is a light right now. A light that is here in the present today on Christmas Day. And so the light that we light in the center of our Advent wreath is a sign that this isn't something that's coming later as Simeon was waiting, but it's something for now. And I pray that this little light here in this candle can be like, in Jesus' words, a little mustard seed. That in the birth of a little baby, this little baby is going to go on and mean so much more for the world and for you. And this is the promise that we claim again here today. The Christmas promise that hope and love is born in Christ Jesus. Merry Christmas to you and to your family. God bless you. Thanks be to God for this day. Amen. Angelus Domini, Maria, et concepit Spiritus In this season of giving, I want to take a moment to say how good it is to be doing ministry with you, to see you as our ministry partners, and the many ways in which you have generously supported our ministry this year. 
this time we invite you to consider one more gift, a Christmas gift to St. Andrew, and it will go to help us prepare and be ready for a new year where we can all be gathering and doing ministry together. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of wonder, you bring your word into the world to live among us in your son, and you have named him Jesus. As Simeon held your son in his arms and proclaimed that our salvation has come, may we too proclaim with joy and hope the good news of your birth that is for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, like the star that led shepherds to come to you and worship you that first Christmas night, Lead us as we journey on the path of life. Guide us at every turn. Give us strength when we grow tired and weary. Point us to the paths of compassion, kindness, and love as we seek to serve you by serving others, to feed the hungry, tend to the sick, and comfort the brokenhearted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, the angels announced peace on earth, yet the world still struggles with finding peace in our lives. Touch the hearts of all who lead and all who follow, of those who know you and those who still wander in darkness, that one day we might together work and live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, as we celebrate the birth of your Son, be with those whose lives are touched by sadness and grief, those who are missing the presence of a loved one this Christmas season. May the hope born on Christmas comfort them and wrap them in your love and promise of eternal life. And we pray for those who are not able to celebrate as they would like to due to illness, surgery, abuse, addiction, and loneliness. Restore their spirits and bring healing to their lives so that they can return to the life-giving activities of a new and better day. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to gather around your own communion table as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take your bread and your wine or grape juice and hear these words, the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word And the Word was God. Yes, the Word was God. Through Him all was made. And without Him nothing was made. In Him was life. 
that life was the light of all. And the Word became flesh and dwelt Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need, through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive the benediction. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born, Jesus Christ is born, Jesus Christ is born.
Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.